So it's Friday the 2nd of October and I was just relaxing taking the day off before I work on my usual Monday video over the weekend but this story came up and I have to cover it for you guys. Now over the last week or so there's been some reports about Nintendo winning a $2 million judgment against Switch piracy and the hacking scene and this was something that came out on the 30th of September just a couple of days ago how Nintendo came to an agreement with uberchips.com, an online store that sells team executor switch hacks and chips, notably around the SXOS hardware and software that they sell for the Nintendo Switch to get that modded. And I think Nintendo's really taken a lot of interest in this story, especially with the latest revisions that can actually unlock or jailbreak a Nintendo Switch Lite. It's something that Nintendo has been a lot more, I guess, focused on. So Nintendo did sue uberchips.com for $2 million. Now, normally those kind of amounts are kind of public amounts. And I think in general, you know, those payouts actually are a lot less. But $2 million, I mean, uberchips was a target of Nintendo. But it's interesting because this has happened before, you know. Nintendo has gone after a lot of resellers trying to basically circumvent the sale of mod chips for the Nintendo Switch, but they've never really made any inroads with Team Executor themselves. There was a situation that happened last year when Nintendo was able to basically get their website taken down for a short amount of time, but it wasn't a permanent thing and basically Team Executor has been doing business pretty much the whole time. I mean, they haven't really stopped doing business, even though stories like this have come up over the last, you know, 12 months or so. But everything has changed now because today there was a very interesting story that was sent to me via DM. And I want to say a big thanks to uh, Mr. Mario 2011 for sending me this. But Team Executor, two members of Notorious Video Game piracy group team executor are in custody now this is this is absolutely big i mean team executor has been around literally since the days of the original xbox in 2001 all the way up until today now i think you know the the company themselves has changed hands and i believe there was a you know a, a change of ownership maybe about 10 years ago i'm not really sure about the backstory but you know, there's been some arrests made, and these are very high-profile arrests. So walking through this particular de Department of Justice article, uh, Max Luren, 48, a French national, Wining Chen, 35, a Chinese national of Shenzhen, China, and Gary Bowser, 51, a Canadian national of Santo Domenico, were charged in a federal indictment unsealed today. The indictment alleges that the defendants were leaders of a criminal enterprise that developed and sold illegal devices that hacked popular video game consoles so they could be used to play unauthorized or pirated copies of video games. Popular consoles such as the Nintendo Switch, Nintendo 3DS, and they talk about you know their history with older systems such as the Microsoft Xbox. But it's interesting that they also go into more detail here discussing some of the products that Team Executor has sold and you know in the past they did the gateway 3ds the stargate the true blue mini the classic 2 magic which was something that i reviewed about a year and a half ago on the channel and to be honest with you i wasn't even familiar that it was a team executor product but it's interesting and then also the sx line of devices such as the sxos and the sx pro and the sx Lite, which is their mod chip devices that they sell for the nintendo switch now keep in mind team executor was heavily criticized by the homebrew community and you know the the modding community that they would sell a license to unlock its custom firmware to use on the nintendo switch and it's interesting that information was also mentioned in this particular justice.gov article as well so basically, yeah, Team Executor has been arrested. Now, I don't know what this means going forward, but this is this is serious, guys. I mean, Nintendo isn't playing around anymore. They've, they've spent lots of time trying to mitigate the sale of these devices by going after the resellers, but now they've bagged the elephant, if you will. So Max Luren and, and Gary Bowser were arrested abroad in connection to charges in the case. 
and they're seeking to extradite them to stand trial in the United States. Now, this is something that just came out today. Also mentions that each defendant is charged with 11 felony counts, including conspiracy to commit wire fraud, conspiracy to circumvent technological measures, and to traffic in circumvention devices. So yeah, this is a, a huge story in, in the world of modding. The Nintendo Switch obviously is no secret to you know, modding and Team Executor was someone that was jumping on the bandwagon for modding the Nintendo Switch very early on. But I think it was really when the Nintendo Switch Lite and basically their solution to that was when was when Nintendo really started to take notice because when the Switch Lite and the SX Lite mod device came out for the Nintendo Switch Lite, Nintendo really seemed to, you know, get very, very unhappy about that and start going after these reseller groups. This is a massive story. There are many people out there that probably have Team Executor SXOS devices. There are probably many of you guys that use a SXOS day-to-day -day with your Nintendo Switch, and there are probably some of you that have bought SXOS OS hardware and you're waiting for that stuff to get shipped to your house i really don't know you know what the outcome of all that stuff is going to be going forward but i would probably bet right now that team executor as we know are at least going to just be at a complete standstill while this court process you know runs its course and i'll definitely keep an eye on the story for you guys because i do think this is something that is worth talking about there's been many high profile court cases over the years about mod chip makers versus big video game companies and this is just another in a long list of court cases that have happened so we'll see how this plays out but on paper at least based on this justice.gov article it doesn't look good for team executor hopefully they have a good team of lawyers behind them because Nintendo doesn't play and they're certainly not playing with this one. But if I was Nintendo, I would be feeling pretty confident about this particular one. Team Executor has a lot of work ahead of them if they can come out with a victory in this particular instance but this doesn't look good for them but we'll definitely keep an eye on this one and you know see how this goes but this is a big story and again i didn't want to make a video today but i definitely want to cover this for you guys and let you know what's going on well guys i hope you enjoyed this video let me know what you thought about it in the comments below if you liked it leave me a thumbs up and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye for now